Welcome to CMST 210 Interpersonal Communication. I am Kelsey Denton and I am your instructor for this course. This is an entirely online course, so the whole course is delivered through Canvas. However, it might be different than some of the other online courses you've taken because it's interpersonal communication, which means you're going to spend a lot of time assessing communication, producing communication, and actually communicating with me and with your classmates. This is not really a lecture, take the test, lecture, take the test kind of course. So that means you've got to be especially aware of how the course is set up so that you can complete your assignments successfully. I hope though that you'll find that it's a really rewarding course and that if you have any questions, you won't hesitate to reach out and ask me. I'm here to support you and I'm here to make sure that you can have as smooth a ride as possible through our course content. So please don't ever be afraid to ask me about where something is or how to find it or how it works. I will help you. That's what I'm here for. So to get started, let's take a look at how our class is laid out. Our class uses the following tabs over here. So we have a home page, announcements, modules, Blackboard Collaborate, grades, and then these three links, which link us to outside resources available at Green River. The first one is Need a Tutor. This will link you to the tutoring page at Green River Community College, and that will also link you there from there on to the Writing Center, which for you might be a really valuable resource. You will need to write two papers in this class, and the Writing Center can be really helpful with that. The Writing Center also has online tutoring, so you might not even need to go to campus. You could use their online tutoring. Next is personal counseling. In this class, we talk about your relationships, and that can give you all of the feelings. So uh, remember that as a Green River student, you have access to personal counseling on campus for free. And if this class should for any reason bring up feelings that you think you need to talk about with a personal counselor, do it. It's there for you. And then finally, we've got a link to the Holman Library, and that will connect you to the library page. And that page uh, can help you with MLA citations and other things of that nature. You won't need to do any formal research in this class, but you will need to use MLA to format your papers. So those are three uh, links to resources that are available to you uh, through Green River. These links are ones that we will use for the navigation and work in our course. So this home page is where we are now. And on the home page every week, I will update what it is we are doing. So this week we have this course orientation, which is what you're watching now at the beginning. But after that, that won't be there. You'll just start with week one, week two, week three, whatever it might be. And I will always list the outcomes that you're pursuing for that week, as well as the assignments that are due for that week. So if you're ever unsure what you need to be doing that week or when things are due, you want to come to this home page and check it out. I will also always have a video that goes through the week's assignments with you so that you can be sure that you are on track. And at the bottom here, there are two discussion boards. The first is a course question board. So this course question board is a great place to come with a question. I check my email really regularly. I check my Canvas messages really regularly, but I don't check between Friday and Monday because I got to have a weekend, right? So uh, if you've got a question on Saturday and you need, a, you need an answer really quickly, this is a great place to come because you can post the question to the class and then the class may be able to reply to you faster than I could. So this is a great resource for you um, if you have a question that I'm not gonna be able to answer right away. Even if it's a question for me, it's during the week, it's a good place to post it because then other students can see the question and know uh, if, if they're having that same problem that it's not just them. So please use this for questions that you might have in the class. It's a really great way to build consensus about problems and to help me uh, respond to you quickly and to help your classmates support you if uh, I'm not available. So that's the course question board. And then the other question board is the course water cooler. And this is just a place for you guys to talk about anything else you might want to talk about that's perhaps uh, off topic from other discussion boards we're using in the class. So maybe you see a really cool video on BuzzFeed and you want to post it here. Maybe you read something interesting in the paper that's related to our class content and you want to post it here. That's what this space is for. Just remember that our class is a professional environment, so you need to adhere to netiquette standards, which are linked in your syllabus. Uh, we want to keep it clean, we want to keep it nice, we want to keep it supportive. So just be mindful of the choices you're making on this board and any board in the class. So those two boards will always be linked at the bottom of this page, but this content will change each week depending on what we're doing. So that's the home page. 
I will use this announcements tab periodically to send out reminders to maybe respond to uh, the class as a whole on assignments to give updates on my grading things like that. Uh, for example, I've already sent out one because there's a mistake in your syllabus. I wrote that you needed that you would be writing three papers in this class, but you're actually only writing two. I'm sure you're devastated, but I wanted to make sure you knew that there aren't three papers. There's only two. So that's the kind of thing that I use these announcements for. The modules, which is the next tab, are really the meat and potatoes of the course. Absolutely everything that you need to read, do, see, look at is in these modules. So I organize modules by week. And I only ever have two weeks available to you. And the reason for that is I want you to stay present in the content. I don't want you working so far ahead that you are on in a completely different topic when the rest of the class is working on a, on a past topic. So I only really have two weeks ever available to you at a time. So right now you have week one and you have week two. When week one concludes, you'll have week two and week three. When week two concludes, you'll have week three and week four, etc. So uh, we'll go through what each of these weeks looks like uh, generally, but I want to point out a couple other modules that are available to you here too. So the first one at the top here is the course orientation material. And so it starts with this video that you're watching right now, and then it follows up with our course syllabus. It's really important that you take a look at the syllabus and read it through. These are the guidelines that establish our interactions and relationships with each other. So this tells you what kind of assignments there are. It tells you what I'm like as a person. It tells you uh, the expectations I have for you in terms of participating in this class and things of that nature. The next is an article called Why Citations Matter. And this is because I do want you to use citations from your course textbooks in your papers. And sometimes students don't have any experience with citations and they don't know what they are and they don't know why I'm making them use them. So this article helps explain some of those questions. The next link is a link to the Green River Library MLA Style Guide. And this style guide will actually help you execute those citations in your papers. And then finally, we have the Friday Night Lights Character Guide. And Friday Night Lights is part of our course text. So you'll be watching the show as part of the course text so that we can discuss uh, shared relationships. We all have different relationships, but this show will give us some shared relationships that we're all familiar with so we can talk about uh, characteristics of those relationships. So this, this uh, character guide is something I suggest you print out so that you can have it with you when you're answering questions and uh, participating in discussion boards so that you can easily identify who you're talking about or who other people are talking about. So that is all of the orientation material and that will be up here all quarter long. The modules are organized uh, the same every week. So each week there'll be an intro introduction video or an orientation video that will go through what you're doing that week. And then there'll be a number of tasks. The tasks will be followed by reading that is required to part or um, links to support whatever activity the task is executing. So for example, uh, this first one, which is misnumbered, I'll have to fix that. This first one, uh, you need to read an article, you need to review how to do something, uh, uh, you need to follow up on some details about how to do it and then actually complete the activity. Uh, that is true for the next one, et cetera, et cetera. So each week you'll have a set of tasks like this that have support materials and reading materials uh, tied to them. I use a lot of the same uh, setups in Canvas that you've probably experienced before, discussion boards, quizzes, things like that, but I don't always use them for discussion or quizzes. A lot of times I have activities that are set up in a, dis uh, in a discussion or activities that are set up in a quiz. Uh, so it'll say quiz or it'll, or it'll say discussion, but it actually is an activity. So in most cases, you'll, you're able to access something as long as you want. It's not like you have to do the quiz activity in 30 minutes or something like that, or you only have one shot at it. You can review them over and over again. If that's ever not the case, I will tell you in these uh, modules. You'll see that things that are due are tabbed in all the way here, so there's a whole tab there. And then you can also see that they have a due date and points associated with them on this side. As a general rule, everything in the class is going to be due on either Thursday at 11.59 p.m. or Sunday at 11.59 p.m. You can count on it. So uh, you'll want to make sure that you're watching as the week goes on what needs to be due Thursday and what's going to be due Sunday. The other thing is 
every week I'm going to lecture live at 10 a.m. on Friday. And I'll do that from my office at work. This is my home office. So you'll get to see both spaces. But the my I'll do that from my office at work through Blackboard Collaborate. And that's something that we have access to through Canvas. So that is, in fact, the next tab here. Blackboard Collaborate is a meeting tool that's available to us through Canvas. And if you look at upcoming sessions, you'll see the week one and week two session. When we, If you're able to join me live, and I hope that you will, you'll click on the session and then you'll say join and it'll take you to the session when it's available. Right now you can't join it because it's not open. Uh, that join button will become live five minutes before uh, the session actually starts. So you can join up to five minutes before 10 a.m. on Friday. I will do this almost every Friday at 10 a.m. because there is lecture content I want to share with you. Uh, there's material from outside the textbook that I think is interesting and valuable to what we're studying in the class. But I think that it's really boring to lecture to myself. So I try to create a live environment so that if even one of you can join me, it will be better for everybody. If not, that's okay. The session gets recorded, so even if you can't be there at 10 a.m. to watch it or participate, it's all right. You'll be able to go back and watch it later. But if you can be there at 10 a.m., do. It's a lot more fun. So we'll do that every week. And then, again, if, you're not, if you can't watch live, you can always come back and watch the recordings. They will be here, and I will also post those links in the modules. So uh, the, the last couple modules that are here are Campus Resources and Canvas Help. These are just reference materials for you so that if you're struggling to uh, answer a question about how Canvas is working or if you're looking for some support on, Canva, uh, on Campus, these are uh, resources for you in doing that. The next tab that we want to look at here is Grades. And Grades show uh, your grades for assignments in the class. So this is the test student, and the test student is not doing very well, partly because they don't actually complete their assignments, they just type gibberish in. So uh, the test student is not doing very well. Uh, as you can see, they've got a 16.7, which is an F. But the test student can, not and any student, can go in and look and see what would happen if they got particular grades on particular assignments. So this is called a what-if grade feature. So if you're wondering what your grade would look like if you got 100 on your paper and how that would impact it, you can see how your grade would change. Or let's say the test student had performed better on this discussion board. Oh, they can see that their grade would change. Or they had um, performed better on this prep sheet. Okay, now they have a 4.0. But it's important to remember that this is just fantasy. So you want to revert back to your actual score to remind yourself uh, what your grade actually is. The grade point that you see reflected up here is accurate. So the grade point that you see is the grade point that you will get. Please remember that over the course of the quarter, your grade can change uh, in a lot. In the first part of the quarter, you don't have very many points in, so missing one or two points is devastating. But it, as the quarter progresses and you add points, it becomes less of an issue. And you can check that by looking at your what-if grades like we just did. A couple other things I want to point out to you here is that if you see a check mark like this, that means you got full credit on the assignment. Sometimes I grade things complete and complete. So you either did it or you didn't. If you did it, you got a check mark and you got a full 15 points there. If you didn't, you'll see an X and you got a zero. So you want to uh, make sure you get the check marks, complete the assignment. And uh, if you have the check mark, you can know that that is a perfect score. Sometimes you'll submit things that uh, go in as zeros that still need to be graded. So uh, this prep sheet is something that I haven't graded yet, and that's why it's a zero. Once I grade it, this score will update to um, something else. So immediate, don't immediately freak out if you submit something and right away it says zero. It just says zero because I haven't graded it yet. Once I grade it, you'll know what the score is. If I've graded something, there, there will typically be rubric results or comments on it. So you can click on that and see what I've said and how you've been assessed. Uh, this is a really good way to answer questions you might have about your grade because it should be fairly clear based on what I have said in the rubric as to why you got the grade you got. One exception to this is that after the first discussion board, I won't write any comments. And that's because it takes so much time that I would never get through all the grading that I needed to get through for you guys if I spent time leaving comments on all of the discussion posts. So please know that I'm happy to answer questions you have. If you look at the grade you got on the discussion posts or anything else and you're not sure why you got that grade, especially after referring to the rubric, 
please ask me. I'm happy to talk to you about it and explain it. I just don't always take the time to do it up front. So please don't hesitate to ask if you've got great questions about your grades. So those are some tips for the grade book. Those are pretty much all the tabs we use in the class. So hopefully that helps give you a sense of how the class works and where to find things. Uh, as always, you're welcome to ask me questions. I try to be really clear about what's due when and where and how, but it's a lot clearer to me because it comes from my head. So if it's not clear to you, ask me. I'm here to help you. I hope that we have a really great quarter together and I look forward to getting to know you better. Thanks.